In this video, I want to elaborate about secondary structure, secondary protein structure. And in the last video, we sort of introduced the idea of secondary structure and mentioned two key things. And those were the alpha helix or alpha helices, right, and beta pleated sheets. Okay, and we mentioned that it was important to understand that we're thinking about hydrogen bonds. Oops, hydrogen bonds. Um, holding these two themes together. And the hydrogen bonds exist specifically between the backbone of the polypeptide, right? Not the R groups. We're not considering hydrogen bonds um, involved through the R groups. We're just considering the ones between the carbonyl groups and the amide hydrogens, right? So this is the hydrogen bond that we're concerned with, right? So how does that come into play with alpha helix and how does it come into play with beta pleated sheets? Well, let's begin our discussion with the alpha helix. So what should we know about an alpha helix? Well, the first thing that we should keep in mind is that it's a right-handed helix. And what does that really mean? If you hold out your right hand, point your thumb up, and ter turn your hand sort of to or turn your wrist towards your fingers, and causing your fingers to point upwards, and you you know kind of create a helix that way. If you do that with your left hand, you would see that the direction of the two helices is a little bit different. Details behind that I don't personally feel are incredibly important um, to sort of uh, to to understand you know what an alpha helix is. But uh, it's a good thing to keep in mind that it is now a right-handed helix. Okay, and there are plenty of details about alpha helices, including how many peptides uh, there's, that there's one polypeptide per helix, how many amino acids there are per turn, all kinds of crazy things. But I kind of want to just talk about you know the things that are I think are key to to understanding you know what an alpha helix is. So, um, well, it is a helix, right? So let's think about it being a helix looking like this. Let's draw it out kind of like this. Right, if we imagine this, what I'm drawing here to be a polypeptide chain, right? So each little section here, this string here, is a string of a bunch of amino acids. Okay, just tons and tons of amino acids. Okay, so um, this this structure would have to be held together in some fashion, right? Well, we would expect it to be held together by these hydrogen bonds, which is what I'm sort of getting at here. So the hydrogen bonds that exist along this um, this helix. Well, first I want to mention that the axis of the helix is, you know, up and down like this. So just imagine this, uh, this, you know, this dotted line here, if you will, right? This is the axis of the helix. Okay. Okay. So what we have here, <clears throat> excuse me, is we're going to have hydrogen bonds existing sort of sort of like this um, where we might have you know uh, an, a hydrogen bond here right and then a hydrogen bond here and then a hydrogen bond here and then a hydrogen bond here holding this helix together okay so each one of these little the lines here is a hydrogen bond now we mentioned that the hydrogen bonds are between the backbone so when I want to mention this over here we have we have hydrogen bonds between the carbonyl and the amide hydrogen every fourth amino acid so every fourth amino acid so we have one amino acid here four amino acids later in the in the chain we have that that fourth amino acid hydrogen bonding with this this one here Right, likewise over here and here and here. So these H bonds are sort of holding this helix together. Okay. Something to just bear in mind is that these H bonds, right, specifically, are parallel, right? They are parallel to the axis of the helix, right? These 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 lines here, these little H bonds, they're running parallel to the axis of the helix. Okay, that's something to keep in mind. Okay, one more thing I feel is imperative to keep in mind is that 
what are the R groups doing? Where are the uh, the side chains? Where where are they in this, in this sort of mess? The R groups of the amino acids are all pointing outward somehow. And I'm obviously not going to be able to draw them all, but if we have R groups, they're going to be pointing out of the helix like this. Okay. So these are all the side chains, right? Now this is obviously not the best drawing. If you go on to you know conduct a Google image search, you'll find um, you'll find these uh, you know images of these helices, and I'm sure they're much better than what what I can draw here. But it's a uh, this is sort of give you an idea of what's going on with an alpha helix. So uh, if we have some sort of really really long chain of amino acids at some points we might find you know a helix here and maybe maybe between uh, amino acids number 50 and and 100 you might see a couple alpha helices and then we might not see another alpha helix until like you know maybe between amino acids 101 and you know 200 who knows right but the point is that we'll see that if you if you kind of conduct a google image search uh, of the structures of proteins you'll find that you'll see many many alpha helices and you'll also see beta pleated sheets sort of um, coming into play. One more thing I did want to notice or did want to mention about alpha helices is that um, they're usually mentioned about sometimes when they're talked about they talk about how the um, uh, the alpha helix is a dipole right the alpha helix is a dipole in which uh, one end will be the um, the, the uh, what's it, let, me, let me draw this in a different color the um the n terminus will be the uh will be the delta positive end right because the night the amino terminus has a positive charge and though the c terminus will be considered the delta minus the 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 end that has the partial negative charge okay so um so if we think about this 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 could be the um the n terminus right and this could be the carboxy terminus right so this would be the delta positive end, delta minus end. Okay, so this is what sort of what an alpha helix is like. Now, what things could disrupt this alpha helix? What things could mess this up? Right. Let's talk about that. Okay, so let's talk about things that can disrupt or ruin an alpha helix. Okay, so um, there are there are plenty of things that can do that. Um, one thing I want to mention first and foremost is the amino acid proline, right? Proline, if it's somewhere in this alpha helix, it can mess it up. And the reason why is because if you recall, proline, right? Um, it's restricted in its rotation because of the fact that its R group binds back to its amino um, amino group, right? So its rotation is restricted due to its R group, right? And I'll kind of draw that out in just a second, right? Um, another thing is quite simply that its alpha amino group, right? Oops, I don't want to draw it like that. I want to write out the word amino. Its alpha amino group does not have an H available available for hydrogen bonding. All right, so let me kind of draw this out quickly for you. So if we have um, an amino acid here, let's just call it R1 amino terminus here, and then it's connected to proline let's kind of draw proline out so if we draw proline right here right it's gonna look like this right when that when when this binds like this right proline right this nitrogen here does not end up having an H that it can use to hydrogen bond so um, so that th these hydrogen bonds wouldn't be able to exist to hold together the alpha helix. So if proline is somewhere in an alpha helix, that's a problem. It's, like, it's going to disrupt it. Or if there's like a mutation that you know substitutes a proline in for an amino acid that wasn't proline initially, um, that you know proline could ruin that protein structure. 
because where there should have been an alpha helix, there might no longer be one. Okay, so proline could definitely damage this uh, damage an alpha helix. Okay, another factor um, is is if there are um, electrostatic repulsions or attractions. Electrostatic um, repulsions. from amino acids with charged side chains or with like charged side chains okay so let's say there's an arginine next to an arginine okay so arginine next to an arginine so an example here an example arginine next to an arginine both of these are going to have positive charges as we know positive charges or or if like charges repel, right? So um, if they're somewhere near each other where there's supposed to be an alpha helix, then bending away from each other could compromise the alpha helix, right? Uh, another example would be, um, you know, aspartate and aspartate, right? An aspartate near another aspartate. If they both have negative charges, they'll repel, right? So if they're repelling each other, within where there's supposed to be an alpha helix that could compromise, you know, the ability of these hydrogen bonds to form where they're supposed to form. Okay. So that could damage the the alpha helix because those hydrogen bonds need to form in order for the structure to, to sort of be maintained. Okay. Um another thing is just if there are um if there are bulky side chains, okay, so steric hindrance, right? Steric hindrance right let me sort of underline that underline this um from this is steric hindrance caused by bulky side chains being close together close to each other right so if there's like a phenylalanine right which has an r group that's that you know the R group for phenylalanine looks like this. It has uh, a CH2 and then, you know, oops, this, uh, you know, benzene ring here. Um, that, that, that's huge, you know. So, um, phenylalanine next to another phenylalanine. Right, if they're both next to each other, that could be you know the, the bulky side chains right might you know they take up space and if they if they're taking up space they might not that uh could cause you know this 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 string to sort of kind of go out of whack and and again allow the or cause a disruption in these h bonds being able to form okay so that's something that could also disrupt the alpha helix okay so i want to i like to end the video there and uh continue the talk about beta pleated sheets in another video, which I will make in just a second. <laughs> Alrighty. Thanks for watching, guys.